today we are here at Eastland Lake. This is Hogtown Camping and I'm Chris and this is my stealth camp for March by the Stealth Camping Alliance. Alright, so like I say, this here is Eastland Lake in the town of Eastland, Texas. Um, it's actually a little late in the evening. I had to work around my wife's schedule. And so I'm going to be probably setting up in the dark. Um, this is a, not a very big lake. It's, um, I don't know, but there's some pretty good fishing here. Um, it's kind of a little known place unless you're a local. Um, but I'll tell you some more about Eastland a little later when I get to the camp set up. But in the meantime, um, in the meantime, I'll catch you later. As you can see, it's about dusk. Um, I had to kind of come late because of my wife's work schedule. We had to kind of uh, coordinate a little bit. And so I'm going to be putting the tent up pretty quick in the dark. So bear with me and let me get this set up and I'll get right back to you.
bit dark, so I'm gonna get my light out. So, the tent is now set up, and it's not terribly dark, but it's dark enough. Okie dokie. So, we're back. I decided it was time to have a little beer. Nothing fancy, just a, a Modelo Chilada, which is basically a Modelo Michelada in a can. If anybody is from Texas, they know what a michelada is. Otherwise, it's basically a Bloody Mary made with beer with some spice in it and uh, a little lime juice and whatnot, but it's pretty good. So, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Eastland. So, we're north central Texas. We are right off of I-20, not a very big town. But it's a historical town. Um, it was founded about 1870 something, maybe 1875. Um, we, it's the county seat. And one of the most famous story or people that, that has lived here, uh, if anybody is familiar with the movie Young Guns that was about Billy the Kid, well, there was a a character in that movie named Doc Spurlock which he was a, a real person and he was part of Billy the Kid's outlaw group well he when he got older he moved to Eastland and and lived here until he died see another thing that this town is is known for is the story of Old Rip now Old Rip was a Texas horn toad. And back in the 30s, the one of the old courthouses here in town burnt down. And so they had to build a new one. Well, while they were building the new one, uh, one of the workers come across this horn toad. And for whatever reason, he stuck him in the in a like a opening inside one of the cornerstones and sealed him up well like 30 years goes by and this building was they decided to tear it down and, and build a, a new modern structure and so while they were in the process of tearing the old one down they come across that cornerstone opened it up and there was the horn toad still in there and he was still alive he was desiccated and kind of like catatonic but he was still there and they took him out and I don't know how long he lived after that but he was still alive nonetheless after he died they embalmed him 
and they put his body in a glass display case and it still sits in our courthouse to this day and so that's a little bit of like some history about the town probably the biggest thing history wise that this town is known for so I believe it was in the early 1920s there was a man named Marshall Ratliff and he decided he had just got out of prison and he decided he wanted he was from a town called Cisco which is 10 miles west of here he decided he wanted to rob the bank in Cisco and so he got a couple I think three people together with him and they they came to Cisco and he dressed up like Santa Claus and so here's this man dressed like Santa Claus he's walking down the street you know going to the bank just be bopping along and people and kids are coming up to him you know and it's around Christmas time so he's not really out of place so anyway he moves right along and he's just playing along he's Santa Claus you know and he gets to the the bank and goes in and then his co-conspirators they come in right behind him and that's when the holdup starts well in between them stealing the money I think they stole like twelve thousand dollars they, you know, some people were shot. I think the, the chief of police ended up getting killed in that of the Cisco uh, Police Department. So anyway, they get away, and it becomes one of the biggest manhunts in the state of Texas at that time. I want to think they found, they caught him in Graham, Texas, and, you know, one of the guys had died during the, during all of the manhunt another guy he was injured and so they just left him and then before it was all said and done Ratliff they brought him back to Eastland and they put him in jail here in Eastland and the people here in town and from the surrounding area they they were out for blood they for whatever reason you know the, him robbing the bank and doing what he did it really rubbed them the wrong way and so they broke into the jail and they got him out and they lynched him right there on the corner next to the police department and uh, it was the last I want to think it was the last lynching in the state of Texas and now there's a monument there talking about this is where he was lynched uh, in Cisco there's a a monument I think at the bank where all of it happened but anyway I think there's been a few books written about it uh, I want to think somebody even wanted to make a movie about it but it never happened but now that that's kind of out of the way with the history stuff I want to talk about something that really excites me obviously Camping excites me a lot. I, I've loved camping my whole life. Uh, I didn't get to go much. You know, my dad was a lot, always busy, and and uh, you know, I was a, in the Boy Scouts, and so I got to camp a little bit there. But other than that, maybe once a year, me and my friend would get together, and we would. <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but. I guess in a way we were stealth camping we would hop the fence into my neighbor's uh, brush and there was a nice little clearing there and we would set up and camp overnight you know we would take care of things we would leave things clean we wouldn't you know leave things tore up or nothing I mean we took care of it and so one of the things and I know this is going to be cliche, but it's a staple of camping. But one of the things we enjoyed was telling ghost stories. <laughs> and so, um, Eastland has a few ghost stories. Uh, but there's one in particular that pertains to this town. And then there's another one that's fairly well known in the area. It took place in the, it's in the county. But that one I'll start with and it actually takes place in the town of Seep Springs which is I'm not sure how far it is I know it's in this county it's just a little bitty 
blink and you miss a town. So there's a county road, dirt road, that goes uh, through that town. And if you're driving down it, you'll come across a grave marker along the side of the road. And what happened was back in the, the old days, there was a wagon train going through there. And there was a little girl who was riding in one of the wagons and somehow she fell out. And when she did, I don't know if she just fell and landed wrong or if maybe she was trampled by one of the, the horses from behind. Regardless, she died. And so they buried her right there where it happened, the, the people that she was with. So over the years, you know, they built a county road through there at some point. And, you know, somebody has always, I guess, taken care of that because now there's a kind of a, an actual marker there and, and nobody knows the little girl's name. They didn't write anything. All they, I guess, put down was, you know, died while traveling west, fell out of a wagon, you know, there's no gear or nothing. And so... Like I say, there's a modern grave marker there now, not like one of the big granite slabs at the cemetery, but just a, you know, just a concrete marker. And so the story goes, if you go there and visit, you have to leave something. And the, the name for this grave that everybody calls it is the penny grave, because a long, a long time ago, that's what people would leave, would be pennies. I mean, there's pennies all over the place. But you can leave anything, you know, it don't have to be a penny. So the story, like I say, the story is you got to leave something. But if you take something, they say the little girl will follow you and haunt you. I've never taken anything. I've always left something, so I don't know. Um, now this story, this pertains here in Eastland. So... So here in Eastland, we have three lakes. This one, which, like I said, is Eastland Lake. And then outside of town, towards where I live, in a town called Desdemona, is Lake Leon, which is a bigger lake. And that's more of your recreational lake, you know. We can go out there with fishing boats and, you know, RV parks and stuff like that. And then there's a little smaller lake than this one on the other side of town called Ringling Lake. And the story with that place is back when John Ringling was had his circus, he paid to have a railroad line put through here. And when his circus was traveling through Texas, well, they would stop there and they would do their kind of winding down, you know, just sort of break, it was like a break place. And out there, they called it Ringling Lake after that. And so, the city runs this the, that area, and there's a little park there. And for years, people were allowed to go in there and hike and, uh, I guess, fish probably, you know. But it wasn't just a big place. And uh, several years ago, the city closed it because people were vandalizing it and tearing things up but now they've opened it back up but it's only for people who you know want to ride atvs and stuff they have some atv trails and so they let people in there to do that and then there's also a shooting range and so you can go in there at, to the shooting range so anyway out there at the lake there's a bridge and the story goes there was this woman at some point in the past and she had a baby and her and the baby were on the bridge and somehow the baby fell off and fell in the water and she jumped in the water after the baby well unfortunately they both drowned and now people say you can go out there at night and hear her screaming looking for her baby and before I, uh, while I was thinking of things to, to talk about during this video, you know, I knew I wanted to tell a ghost story, 
and I knew I was going to have to tell that ghost story. And so I, I reached out on Facebook to some one of our local Facebook groups, and and you know one thing I found is everybody has a different version of the story. You know, some people say like I like I told you, her and the baby fell off. You know, another story was that the woman's husband threw the baby off and she went after it. I mean, there's a bunch. But all of them agree that that's the 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 main detail that's consistent is that she you can hear her at night screaming looking for her baby. And a little tidbit about that story. So when I was younger, if if you're go that direction about maybe a quarter of a mile there's the Eastland County livestock grounds and when I was a kid we used to show livestock there at the at that place well this lake being right next to it my brother decided he would be Mr. Smart Guy and you know we would be up here at night at the show barn and he was like better watch out when you're walking around the place at night you know uh there's a ghost lady out there at the lake you know and she screams and you can hear her screaming looking for her baby and and i'm not gonna lie you know that that stuck with me when i was a kid you know but like i say as an adult i found out it's not actually this lake it's ringling lake and the name that they've given to this woman and I don't know if this is what her real name was, but this is just what people call her, is Screaming Sheila. And sadly, I'm afraid it's one of those stories, sort of like the lady in white, you know, it gets passed around so much that it don't matter where you live, there's always that kind of story about somebody, you know, having this happen to them, and now you see their ghost, you know, you know, kind of like one of those urban legends, like the Hook Man. It happened to a friend of mine, you know. Or anyway, but it, it's a neat story. So, I guess the next thing I want to do is talk a little bit about my gear. So, my tent, um, if you can see it in the background, it's a little dark. It's just a simple tent. Uh, it's a stand port, which... Anybody's familiar with them, they're just a, a really low budget camping outdoor gear company. But the reason I got it was one, it was inexpensive, and two, it was kind of some nostalgia. Um, when I was in the Boy Scouts as a kid, that's the kind of tent I have just a simple A frame scout tent. Um, and it's the first time I'm using it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be doing some some stuff with it. The switch out the guy lines for actual paracord or something a little sturdier. Um, but otherwise, we'll see how it goes tonight and see if it's as good as the one I had as a kid. Um, some of the other stuff I have is just simple Walmart stuff, which is the Ozark Trail brand, like my table, my chair, um, my sleeping pad. And then, uh, and, and I want to I want to get out. None of the stuff I have is sponsored. I don't have any sponsors, you know. But I want to shout out to some of the the companies that I've got here. Um, the first is uh, let me show you my my water bottle here. Um, I got this from a company called Bespoke Post, and I don't know, I'm sure some people have heard about it, it's just a monthly subscription, it's like 50 bucks a month, and every month they send you some kind of gear, or some kind of cocktail thing, um, one time they sent me a smoking kit, like to smoke cocktails, uh, this month they sent me a hatchet, you know, one month I got the water bottle, I've got a blanket, a jacket at one time, and I don't know how many knives I've gotten, uh, but they're really cool. A lot of cool stuff. Some of it's real good quality. Uh, 
Another thing is my lantern here. Now that is a fire maple lantern. And I come across fire maple on Facebook on one of the ads one time and just started looking at them. And what really initially drew me to them is they sell their version of the jet boil. But it's like a third of the price. You know, you can get one of theirs, I think, for like 70 bucks. But I've got several pieces of gear from them. And like I say, they are not a sponsor. They're just a company I like so far. But I recently got the lantern. And then it also, I've got this little uh, gas canister cover. It's leather with their logo. I've also got a, a cooking pot and two backpacking stoves from them. And all of it's pretty good quality considering it's a Chinese company. But I highly recommend looking into them. I mean, they're good stuff. So anyway, that's pretty much it for now. I think I'm going to get back with you guys later. I'm going to sit here and, and enjoy my beer and just relax a little bit. See y'all later. Alrighty, so since we last saw each other, I went ahead and put my long sleeves on. It's getting a little chilly out here. Not too bad. It's about maybe 60. It's been 80 here today. But I think it's time to eat a little eat a little vittles. We got a mountain house beef stew meal here. And I'll show you what I'm how I'm gonna cook it with this fire maple backpacking stove. So stand by. Alrighty, so I've already poured up my water. I've got a cup and three fourths in here. And uh, let me get this stove lit. This is a, like I say, this is a fire maple. I forget the name of it. I think it's a blade two. And uh, this is the first time using it. So I'm gonna light it. Oh, a little too much. Turn that sucker down a little bit so we don't set the woods on fire. And here's my pot. This is also a fire maple. And uh, come with this little this little steamer basket so you could steam you some veggies or whatever you need. And uh, I lit it with my trusty Zippo. I had this sucker a long time, lit many of cigars and everything else with it. So gonna sit there and let this cook up and when I get done with it I'll sit down and have a bite to eat. Alrighty so I switched to my phone here I'm gonna check this water I've had it going maybe a couple minutes um, kind of hard to see let me get a flashlight here there's all my crap but uh, I actually forgot my headlamp. I had a headlamp that I was going to bring and I forgot it. So luckily my solar power bank has a flashlight built in. So hold just right. Hold tight. All right. So this water, as you can see, it's starting to get some bubbles going. Like I say, I've had it going maybe now, maybe three minutes close to that, if that. And it's getting, getting there. So, we'll see how it goes when I pour it into this here freeze-dried pouch. Alrighty, as you can see, that sucker's steaming pretty good. So, my water is definitely boiling. I'm going to turn it off. And then, uh, hopefully it's not too hot. As you can see, it's a, a decent rolling boil. I'm get the camera a little bit <laughs> steamed. So I'm going to pour this in the pouch and see how it goes. Hopefully I don't burn myself or spill it. I've had a few of these mountain house meals. I mean, they're not bad. I didn't bring any seasoning with me, so it's not going to taste as good as it could but it is what it is it's something to eat all right so i'm going to seal this up and let it sit 
and I'm gonna have me another beer. Alrighty, so I'm back. Uh, got my water boiled and got it poured in the pouch, and the food is cooking as we speak. Um, so I decided to crack open another beer. This time it's a, a Dos Equis with salt and lime. Probably one of my favorite beers. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Dos Equis anyway, especially draft. Add a, a wedge of lime and squeeze it in there. And I mean, it is, oh, it's like the nectar of the gods. But anyway, so that's what I'm drinking. Um, let me talk about this here Mountain House freeze dried meal. Uh, I've had a few of them. And the beef stew is probably the best. It's what we got tonight. I have to add a little salt and a little pepper to it usually, but like I said previously, I forgot all that stuff, so I'm just having to eat it as is. Um, in the past, I've also tried the peak meals, and they're they're pretty good. I, I've, I wished I had one of those, but we had a stockpile of these in the closet, so that's what I got. Um, the stars are, are really nice tonight. Uh, I can't really see it now. It's kind of moved, but at one point, that way, you could really see Orion. But it's kind of between the, fla the, the flashlight and, and then, you know, the earth is rotated a little bit. You can't really see it now, but so we had a lot of people out here fishing when I got here, and I was kind of a little bit worried that they would see me and be like, "What are you doing?" You know, there, there's I don't think there's any camping allowed here. You know, you can come out here and fish all day long, and there's no no price or anything like that. But I've never heard of anybody camping here, although where I'm at. People have come out here and done something because there's beer bottles and cans and crap scattered everywhere. So I might try to pick that up in the morning. But I mean, it's real nice and quiet. The since all those people left and all the boats left and, and it's quiet, dark as a bat's ass, but quiet. So yeah. Uh, Had a brain fart. Well, let's check on this food. So, when I stirred it last, it was still good and hot. And, well, yeah, looks like beef stew for the most part. But, let's have it, let's dig in. Alrighty, well I'm back. Finished eating. The beef stew was okay. I mean, it's, it was a freeze-dried meal, so it wasn't like Chef Ramsay or anything, but it wasn't bad for what it was. Um, I'm probably going to head to bed here pretty quick. It's getting a little chilly, and I'm ready for some downtime. I was going to bring a cot, but I didn't really want to lug it, so I ended up just bringing the sleeping pad. I'm going to sleep on the sleep with it on the ground with some blankets hopefully I don't freeze to death it's not supposed to get too cold tonight but uh, before I do that I kind of want to uh, talk about a couple things so obviously this is my first video and hopefully it, it don't look too bad uh, I got a lot of learning to do but I'll get there but the reason I'm doing this is you know, like I said before, I've always loved camping. You know, it, there's just something about getting outside and, and being back to the way things used to be, you know. But as far as stealth camping, I never really heard of it, never really thought of it until about maybe a year ago. And uh, I was, I come across a video Joe Robin Nett posted on YouTube. And he, he stealth camped in a snowbank in a Walmart parking lot. And during that video, he 
was mentioning how, you know, he was going to try it Steve Wallace style, basically, you know. And uh, he kept talking about Steve, and I'm like, who is Steve Wallace, you know? Um, and he even, at one point in the video, called Steve, and, and they talked, you know. And, and, of course, I seen Joe on a loan, and so I kind of know who he was. Anyway, so I looked up Steve, and I can honestly say a year later, and I'm a huge fan. I, he's just such a such an interesting guy, you know, very good sense of humor, very funny, and sometimes, you know, you can't help but, but just grin at the guy, but I know he's been through some hard times the last year, you know, with, with, some, with loss, and, and then a few days ago, he posted a, an update on Facebook <clears throat> talking about Glenn, or as we all know him, crazy neighbor, and how he wasn't doing good at all. I know he broke a hip earlier on, and, you know, that was a bad deal. And, you know, he was in a video not terribly long ago with Steve, but you could tell he, he was having a hard time with it. But it just, it is sad to see that, you know, Steve and Crazy Neighbor and their families are, are having to go through what they're going through and I just want to you know if Steve sees this I just want to say man you know we're all rooting for you and we're all hoping that you know one of these days things will things will kind of get a little bit better but in the meantime we're all praying for you man and and praying for Glenn and and, and hoping he heals and it that this isn't the end for him but um, besides that I kind of wanted to give a, a shout out to a couple people. Well, there was more than that. There were several people that, that really were encouraging to me to do this. And that was in the Stealth Camping Alliance group on Facebook. And one of them was Andrew and another one was Jenny. You know, and like I say, there were some other folks, but those are the two that I really uh, got the most from. I just want to say thanks to those guys, you know, y'all all have been real awesome and encouraging, and I hope this video makes y'all proud, so that's pretty much it, like I say, probably going to go to bed here in a minute, I'm going to finish my, my step two, as Steve would say, and then I'm going to crawl in there and hopefully sleep on the ground without too much problem. Alrighty, good night folks. Alright, I'm back. It's morning time. I'm gonna take another glimpse of the lake in the morning. As you can see, there's some ducks swimming around. There was a bigger flock here somewhere a minute ago, but I guess they've kind of moved away. But I'm not gonna lie, they kept me up all night. But as you can see, it's it's a nice little quiet lake. But, uh, I survived. Alright, so, um, my night went alright. Uh, the camping pad, sleeping pad from Walmart, it actually did a pretty good job. Um, so, the blanket situation sucked. I had to constantly fix my blankets, so I'm gonna have to think of something else to do next time. It's just... It's just a pain in the butt to try to wake it up in the middle of the night constantly having to fix your blankets, but eh, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so let's show you a little bit more around the lake and maybe go into the woods where I was camping. Alright, that's my wife waiting for me. So as you can see, there's a good bit of little woods here next to the lake. Um, little prickly pear, we got those a lot. Um, you know, you can eat them when the, when the, the fruit blooms and all that, you can eat them. A lot of people even eat the leaves, you know, they, they boil them and, and cut the thorns off and, uh, people from Mexico really like them. But, uh, mainly just sort of, uh, like some cedar trees, a few live oak trees out around. I don't really see many mesquite over here. 
mainly just live oak and other just kind of bushes and scrub brush but uh, it's like this is how it usually is around around this area um, where I live in Desdemona which let me tell you about that that's kind of something I wanted to mention about my channel so Hogtown Camping, I call it that because the town of Desdemona where I live was called Hogtown back in the day. And uh, it was an old boom town. At one time there were, you know, at least 100,000 people there. Now there's maybe 200. Little bitty town, but it's home. But like I say, we call it Hogtown and so Hogtown Camping. But as you can see, they've cleared this area here and you can go out and picnic maybe or just park and this lake and the the facilities here what little bit of facilities there are are maintained by the Eastland County FFA Association which I don't understand how that works but as long as they keep a, a nice place for people to come fishing and maybe swimming boating i mean there's a there's a boat dock right down here let me show it to you but um actually that's not a duck that looks like a canada goose the ducks are around the corner here up back there near that pickup of course there's the road that goes over you can actually go over the bridge and turn and come down and there's a, a second boat ramp over there by the bridge but uh but yeah it's a nice peaceful morning so far there's not very many people out here just had one show up and um of course myself looks like somebody's had a little campfire here at some point or another but right here on the bank the last time we were out here all of this part was underwater the lake was was high it was probably right in here was where the the water came but as you can see now there's all kinds of shoreline and rocks and stuff like that exposed anyway i'd hope to see some other wildlife my wife said she saw some deer coming in but that was up by the road there's two more geese but that's pretty much it i think i'm gonna call it quits and i appreciate you guys for sticking with me through the night and hope to see you next time thanks